Welcome back to the Lisbon Lifestyle. I'm your host, Igor Kafetz. Who is more successful? Somebody who works a multiple seven-figure job but hates it, or somebody who's a bum but loves their life? I ponder this question because I spend a lot of time and I spend a lot of energy and effort in order to try and understand what do I define as a success? Because as I went through the years and made lots of money and started and failed with businesses and had my family and children and, and, and family life and everything else that's in between, you know, when I gained weight and lost weight, I observed my life satisfaction levels. And what's interesting is that my life satisfaction wasn't always connected to my income, my fitness, or the quality of my relationship with my children or with my wife or my friends. Oftentimes, it actually resulted in creating an inner conflict for me, uh, that, which made me question myself a lot. Now, in this episode, I really want to answer the question, what is the definition of success and how can you define what success means to you? Because even if you make a lot of money, but you don't feel successful, um, you're probably not going to be satisfied in life in general you're probably not going to be on your deathbed thinking about all the money you've made but instead you're going to be thinking about all the things you wished you've done so in this episode i'm going to give you a couple of tools and a couple of questions that can guide you on answering this once and for all and and helping you identify what the heck does it mean to you to be successful and once you do you'll be able to align everything you're doing to that one purpose and goal and as a result, regardless of your income or your fitness, you'll be able to finally start feeling successful instead of constantly trying to beat yourself up for not living up to some kind of expectation. I'm Igor Kafetz, and this is The List Building Lifestyle, the podcast for anyone who wants to build a wildly profitable email list working from home. If you'd like to make six figures, travel the world, and help people improve their lives in the process, this podcast is for you. I also invite you to claim a free copy of my best-selling book, The List Building Lifestyle, Confessions of an Email Millionaire, at igorsbook.com. Get the free book plus $3,000 bonus package that includes my best capture page templates, email swipe files, and traffic blueprints. Visit www.igorsbook.com for details. And now... It's time to claim your list building lifestyle. The way I define success has really nothing to do with money. And I know it sounds a bit weird coming from a guy who's been focused on making money for so many years and uh, who lives a pretty uh, lavish lifestyle, drives a Porsche, lives in a big house, etc. But for me, the, the definition of success changed over the years. When I started out, success was purely money. That was there. That was really it. It was status and money. And for me, uh, the, the the social filter that created status was money. Therefore, for me, success was pretty much about my income. And if I was making more than the other guy, I consider myself to be more successful than the other guy. The only other thing uh, that I think growing up defined success for me as well, which was kind of tied to money, but that was a bad, like a just a wrong idea that I've had growing up, was women. You know, I'm I'm a very typical sort of conservative guy um, who grew up with very conservative values. So, you know, I've always dreamed of uh, having, you know, a family, um, a, a, a what they would call a trophy wife, right? Something that would be frowned upon today. But I grew up watching the media and uh, watching people around me and anyone who was successful. And obviously, I would look at guys because I'm a guy. So I would not be able to like mentally and physically um, just because of how my system works. I wouldn't be able to model women, successful women, which, again, I didn't really see too many successful women at the time because in Ukraine in the 90s, you really don't see too many successful women. It, it's a very difficult environment. And the closest thing that I've seen to a successful woman was our school principal because she was always wearing these suits. She had a radio phone and she was always walking around like the boss. So that was probably the only example of a successful woman that I've seen. But growing up, it was mostly guys. And, um, you know, anyone who was anyone uh, who was successful, they drove a really expensive car. They made a lot of money. They usually hung out around criminals because back in the day, in the 90s in Ukraine, there was lots of racketeering. Uh, like mafia was real. 
Okay. Like if you, if you were just a normal person who showed any kind of success, you know, if you had a good house or, or an expensive car for whatever reason, they would be knocking on your door and they will be claiming, you know, that you owe them 20% for protection. It would just happen inevitable. So growing up, my idea of success was a successful guy is somebody who's got like a beautiful woman and is making lots of money. And the thing is that over the years, I learned that truly successful people actually live a life by their own design rather than being hostage to some kind of idea um, of, of um, what their life needs to look like. Like if somebody's working a really cool job that pays them a lot of money, let's say they're an engineer and they work for Apple, which is something that a lot of people consider to be a success, but they hate the job, they hate their boss, they hate the office politics, and they have to commute for an hour each way, and they really do not like to work there, then I don't think that person is successful. But to the same extent, if there's some guy who lives in Nebraska, who lives in a tiny little house in the middle of nowhere, and he's got like three goats and five cows, and, and, and he's perfectly satisfied with everything he's got, and he wakes up in the morning with no internal conflict, that guy is successful. To the same extent, by the way, I want to touch upon something a little bit controversial, and that's the way the society now perceives women. You know, like my wife, she made a, a decision early on that she wanted a family, and to her, the definition of success was to get married to a good guy and have two kids, which she did. But now I've noticed that since moving to Canada, she got exposed to a different mindset about what success is and she became confused you know she started questioning her life choices and she was like am i supposed to go start a business now like am i am i a quote unquote a failure for having you know committed to a family but you see that's that's such a weird idea because if she never really wanted to start a business, if she never really wanted to be, you know, independent in the way she makes money, if she never really wanted to become this aggressive, a per, you know, a type personality uh, woman who goes and 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 uh, just dominates the corporate world or something, why would she need to be measured by that yardstick? You don't judge a fish by its ability to climb trees. That is to say that a fish needs to be swimming in the sea. And, uh, you know, some, some other animal will be, or like a squirrel will be climbing the tree, right? You don't see the squirrel questioning itself and be like, should I be swimming right now? Why? Well, because all these other animals are swimming. Maybe I should be swimming. No. And in that way, I think back in the early, like 1400s or something, if you were born in a, in a farmer's family, uh, and, and, and you were like the son of, or a daughter to a farmer, and you were growing up believing that it is your life mission to be a farmer, I think those people were much happier and less confused about life in general. They knew what, you know, what they wanted to do and they just did it, right? Uh, today, we are so confused. We are being fed so much bullshit about what we're supposed to be doing, where we, who are we supposed to be. You know, especially the self-help industry basically tells you that unless you're doing something extraordinary with your life, then you're a fuck up, for lack of a better word that I think we're really taking this too far. You know, some people like to work a job. My neighbor is working a high paying job. Well, I wouldn't say high paying, but like low six figure job. Okay. Which for, for where we live is, it's honestly not enough, but he works a, a low six figures job for a huge company. He leaves for work at 9 a.m. or 8 a.m. He comes back at 4 p.m. He's got uh, two kids, uh, he drives a Volvo, and you can tell the guy is miserable. You can tell the guy is miserable. Now, he can probably benefit from something like what we do and, and really, you know, take on a different career path. But to the same extent, there's another neighbor who has a very similar job with a different company that's also pretty big. Actually, both of them work for uh, media companies. They're just competitors. And one of them is in software. The other one is in uh, project management. So the software guy has three kids, drives a Toyota, makes low six figures, 
His wife is a nurse, I think. And you can tell he's happy. Like you go and have some barbecue with, with the other fella. And the way he talks about his work, the way he talks about his life, and, and, and the way he responds when I talk about my work and my life, you can tell he's satisfied and I think he's successful. And the only reason I think he is successful is because there is no internal conflict for him. He doesn't wake up in the morning and he doesn't go to bed at night thinking, what if? Or he, he doesn't seem like the kind of guy who has like regrets about where he is today. I think that's how I would define a success. Like if he is on his deathbed in 50 years and he looks back on his life and he doesn't question his career choice, I think this guy's a success. And the same can be said about any other life choice. Like I got a good friend. He's, uh, I would call him like, um, like, a, like a wonder kid. Like he's just one, like you see these people once in a generation. And I was blessed to, to, to work closely with him. And he actually helped us in our uh, solids agency so much. Like, honestly, I don't know what we would have done without him. Like he, he built some stuff. He's a coder. He built some stuff that's, I'm talking military grade, uh, level sort of stuff, like incredible, incredibly brilliant guy. Now. One time he questioned me. He said, Hey, why don't you like, why did you start a family so young? I started my family when I was 24. I had my first child at 24. And, um, you know, he said, why don't you, and he's like the opposite, right? So he's, he's more of a, like a pickup artist type. He basically travels to a different country every three days, uh, sleeps with lots of different women. Uh, maybe at this point, you know, not just women. I really don't know. He doesn't tell me, but he's basically every time he's in a different country, with, with different people, loves to party, and is really successful at what he does. So he questioned my life choice, said, why did you, you know, don't you regret? And to, to which I said, look, I made my choice. Uh, it was a very organic decision for me. I didn't have to question myself. I didn't have to ponder about it or write about it in my journal. I kind of was set on this lifestyle before I even kind of stepped into adulthood, maybe it was, you know, part of my conditioning growing up, but my decision, like I'm full with that decision. I made that decision and I'm complete with it. There's nothing that tears me apart and says, no, I should be there. or I should be here. Or if I'm in a, a, a super successful internet marketer, I should be living in Dubai and, and the driving Lamborghini. No, I'm perfectly content with, you know, living in Toronto, pretty boring suburbs kind of lifestyle. And, uh, you know, taking my Porsche out for a spin every now and again to the track. I'm, I'm cool with that, right? Obviously, there are things that I would change about my life. I would probably move to a warmer location near a racetrack so I can go to the track every day. But like right now, as I'm waiting for my Canadian passport, that's, you know, I got higher priorities. And this is what it really comes down to when it comes to life satisfaction and definition of success. Every single one of us has a hierarchy of values and whether we like it or not, we automatically do things that are high on that hierarchy. So for me, you know, my work and my family are really, really, really high on that hierarchy and therefore they dictate every single life decision that I make. And it was like that even before I became successful. Again, successful by the definition that other people would give it. Um, same thing for my friend, you know, the brilliant coder guy. His hierarchy of values is a little bit different. So he puts his work real high, just like me. However, he doesn't have family values. He, his value is probably sex or, you know, something to that extent. So he puts it higher. Therefore, he invests more time and effort into that. But what I'm saying is you are successful if you if you're doing what is high on your hierarchy rather than trying to suppress parts of your hierarchy of values because you think that it's going to be frowned upon or otherwise you know uh wouldn't fit into some sort of an idea or a matrix that you were um uh, led to believe is right for you Thank you for listening to The List Building Lifestyle. Get access to the previous episodes, transcript of today's show, as well as other exclusive content at listbuildinglifestyleshow.com. Also remember to claim your free copy of my best-selling book at www.igorsbook.com. 
It explains how I made millions with list building starting from scratch. Plus, I'll give you $3,000 worth of free bonuses, including my best landing page templates, email swipe files, and traffic blueprints. Go to www.igorsbook.com now to claim your free package.